Welcome back everybody. This video we are going to be talking about strings inside of the C programming language. Now up to this point you've probably worked with some strings because we've done it in earlier videos and you might understand how they work a little bit but I just want to go in a little bit more depth and talk about some of the warnings. So definitely want to watch this video because this is some important stuff. But before we get started I just wanted to mention to you guys that I'm taking all the content from this course condensing it down into a crash course version where you guys can basically do it for a review, for interview prep, whatever you need. Uh, it's definitely a good hands-on way to uh, basically get all the information from this course quickly. So go check that out in the links of the description. So let's get started. Just to refresh, let's talk about what strings are from scratch. So strings are essentially a character array. So let's say we have, let's just first look at the constant version of strings. So by constant, I just mean it's a value. We could use that in an expression, so forth. We're not assigning it to a variable yet. It just, it's just a value. If we wanted to assign this to a variable, we would need a character array. So we would have something like this. And I'm just gonna name this um, A, because it's, you know, creativity, <laughs> not really. And this is going to be an array. So I'm going to put the size of the array here and we're gonna talk about that because that's not always the best thing to do. So just make sure you watch to the end. But for now I'm gonna put that there and then we'll talk about it in just a minute. And then you can assign it that value. So this is basically the, the, the easiest way to assign a string to a variable in C programming. So what this is going to do, and let's ignore this up here for now. We don't need that no more. This is going to make an array, and it's gonna look like this. We're gonna have H-E-L-L-O backslash zero. And what that is, this is called the null character. And it's represented as a backslash zero, similar to how the backslash N represents a new line well, the backslash zero represents the null character. And what this is, is it's a character used to represent, or it's, a, it's used to indicate the end of the string. So if any function was to go through this string one character at a time, it would go through it, it would hit that null character, and it would know that the string is done and to not go forward. This is like super important because if you don't have that there, there is high chances that you're going to be going into areas of memory that you're actually not allowed to access, and you're going to, well actually, it's hard to say what's gonna happen, because technically I think the, the, the issue is uh, undefined, the, the behavior. You don't know what's gonna happen. More than likely your program will crash, but you might accidentally modify some areas of memory. It might hack into your bank account. We don't know, it's very, uh, <laughs> very undefined. So you just want to make sure that you don't accidentally overwrite this character. So for example, if you did something like this, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and set that equal to exclamation mark, well, that's an issue because what we just did is we overwrit this, overwrote it, it's not overwrit, and we replaced it with an exclamation mark. So now there's no way to tell the end of the string. This can come up when you always, basically, you always wanna make sure your sizing for the array is correct and that you don't make it too small for the string you're trying to fit. <laughs> and um, as you uh, are using that array, you always wanna remember that the last character in that array or the string is that null character. Very, very, very important. Also just wanted to mention that when you're getting user input, you never really know the size of what they're going to give you. So you just wanna make sure you um, are prepared for different sizes, different lengths of strings. So for example, with the scanf function, you usually would pass in like a, a string such as percent %s, and this uh, conversion character s would basically say, hey, we're expecting a string. Well, that person can type a string as long as they want. So I think you can actually put a number here, like a nine, to limit, and it'll basically crop after nine characters, they're not going to be able to 
give you any more. <laughs> they can still type it, but when they hit enter, only the first nine characters are going to be used for whatever you're using this for. So if you're assigning it to a variable, it's only gonna use those first nine characters. Just, uh, just a side note, um, just throwing that out there. <laughs> so hopefully that helps you guys understand strings a little bit better. The main thing you gotta know is just that there is a null character at the end, which looks like a backslash zero, and um, you never want to overwrite that. Now, going back to the sizing thing I mentioned earlier, here I put a 10, but I would actually generally not recommend this. I would leave this empty. And the reason that works is because the size of this can be used to determine this. And this happens at compile time, so it's still statically sized. It's, it's not dynamically sized now. What happens is the compiler is the one to decide how long the string array needs to be. And if you put in something like hello, the size would be six because it would look like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. And index five would be, this would be uh, the uh, null character. So the compiler can do that. The only time you would want to put a value there is if, uh, if you're not assigning a string constant like that, and like let's say you're getting it from input, well then you want to make sure that your string size is set so you could use you could use the value 10 there and then only take the first nine characters from the user because you have to reserve that 10th space for 